I'll make a brand new start of it in old New Leon. What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Subaru WRX, courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. And so I'm in this one today for one, because the WRX is awesome and I review it every year, but two, there are actually some significant updates for the 2020 WRX in terms of safety and performance, actually. And of course, I will be going over all of them for you guys in this video today. So as always, let's go ahead and jump right into it and let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 Subaru WRX. First one being the base, that one is going to start at $27,495. Then the premium starting at $29,795. And lastly, the limited, which actually is the one we are in today, this one is going to start at $32,095. But regardless of trim level that we go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering this beast is going to be a two liter turbocharged and intercooled Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 268 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 258 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 2,000 to 5,200 RPM. And that power, of course, is going to be sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system. Power being sent to the ground through a six-speed manual, which I prefer in the WRX, and I'll let you know why in a second here. And that is the one we have today, or a linear tronic CVT if you wanted to go that route simply add nineteen hundred dollars to any of those prices but that one is going to come with paddle shifters although it is a CVT so technically they don't have gears so it is kind of simulated shifting so to speak but I have driven that one before and then I guess is nice if you use the paddle shifters otherwise you will be stuck kind of in the lower rpm range sometimes upon acceleration and that isn't all that exciting especially for the WRX being an exciting car so that is why I personally enjoy the 6B manual a little bit better at least in this particular car it isn't always that way with all cars but for the WRX it is nonetheless zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 5.5 seconds according to car and driver MPG numbers come in at 21 in the city 27 on the highway for the manual 18 city 24 highway for the CVT yet another reason I prefer the six speed in this one and either way it is going to take premium unleaded fuel or 91 and up octane preferably 93 of course but either way before we do any kind of accelerations I did want to mention there is something called SI drive available for the CVT only not the six-speed but essentially what that is going to do is adjust the throttle response shift points and steering sensitivity actually again for only the CVT transmission but having said that let's do a quick little acceleration <laughs> man this car is fun all right, you guys, without a doubt, this is a fun car to drive. Certainly no issues with finding the grab points, ball. although I will say one thing, I'm coming off reviewing, just test driving the STI, and this shifter is a little bit longer of throws, comparatively speaking. I'll, I will say I did enjoy rowing through the STI shorter throws a bit more, of course, although this one's not bad, but having said that, there is a short throw shifter available for the WRX, which is why I am mentioning it that might be one option that you may want to go with on this one. But either way, certainly no issues with finding the grab points. Clutch feel is nice, so I am enjoying driving the six speed that we are in today. And you'll get used to it too. Even if this is your first manual car, possibly, it is something you can get used to quite quickly. Trust me on that one. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs with dual piston front calipers in the back, 11.3 inch solid rear discs with single piston rear calipers. And I did want to mention, this is one of the new features for the 2020 WRX. There is a performance package available for the premium six speed that adds $2,850 but that is going to give you a Brembo braking setup since we're touching on brakes and all that giving you 12.8 inch ventilated front discs with four piston front calipers 12.4 inch rear disc with dual piston rear calipers and that package not only includes the better brake setup but in addition to that a moonroof delete and a Recaro performance bucket seats so really the Brembo brake setup is why I would get that one 
and that is one of the new options for the 2020 WRX. So like I was saying at the beginning of the video, that is the performance upgrade, so to speak, if you wanted to go that route for this one. But continuing on, even without that optional brake setup though, certainly no issues with bringing the WRX to a stop. Braking feel is just fine. No brake pedal delays or anything like that. Then touching on suspension and handling a little bit, suspension is actually going to differ slightly depending on the trim level. For instance, base trim up front, you're going to get a strut type front suspension in the back, a double wishbone type rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. Of course, that is pretty much as expected. However, the premium trim is where it does get a little better, at least concerning the suspension. For instance, premium and limited trims are both going to give you an inverted type front suspension, which is the same setup as you will find on the S. STI, by the way. And by the way, that's a big deal, I guess, because it provides a little extra rigidity. But anywho, it is a little bit better than the base WRX, I guess. But same setup in the back. As far as the steering feel goes, feels just fine to me. STI does have a little heavier weighted steering wheel, but the WRX feels just fine. No issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, what I enjoy about this one is hearing that turbo whistle as you get higher up in the RPM range, and you can definitely hear it. It is a Definitely a plus side in my book, but perhaps one of the drawbacks and it's really to be expected is the ride quality. You are gonna feel a bit more of the road, whether you're driving a WRX or an STI. So I guess if you don't mind that, and I really don't, honestly, if this is the kind of car you're looking at, you really shouldn't mind that kind of thing. And really, it's not all that bad. It is something that you get used to. And for this being one of the best cars to drive in the snow, hence its rally heritage, it is certainly something that wouldn't bother me personally, but I do have to mention it. And touching on visibility a little bit, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Certainly no issues there, and you're not going to have any issues really in, uh, in four-door cars anyways. But that, of course, is right on point as well. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior, and I'll continue to mention the changes as we go on here on this 2020 Subaru WRX. All right, so here it is, the 2020 Subaru WRX, dressed in black. Whoops, absolutely amazing, all black actually. But anyway, let's go ahead and make our way to the front, to the sides, projector beam halogen headlights, you will find on the base and premium trim levels. However, if you were to go with the limited like we have here today, you are going to get LED steering responsive headlights, which is amazing. That means when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle, basically better illuminate what is around the bend so really that's a safety feature in itself and by the way the limited trim does also give you led fog lights just below premium trim will give you halogen fog lights so you still got fog lights there but they're going to be leds with the limited though matte black accents can be found in that middle of the front bumper although they do blend in quite nicely in this black exterior that we have today did want to also mention the ventilated hood will be sending air directly into the engine mounted intercooler so it is functional and it looks good believe it or not so overall the front end on the 2020 wrx definitely looks amazing but making our way to the side black window surrounds once again tying together with our black exterior that we have today wrx badging within that front fender so that's been there for quite a while now that always looks good when it comes to the side mirrors you will get body colored power adjustable side mirrors that will come standard and they are actually heated as well that also comes standard so that is a very good thing considering these cars are quite often driven in the snow hence their rally heritage so did want to also mention there are integrated turn signals that will be optional for the limited although we do not have them today because again they are an option so that's pretty cool as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the wheel setup they are going to differ amongst the trim levels 17 by 8 inch aluminum alloy wheels will come with the base 18 by 8.5 inch aluminum alloy wheels is what you're looking at right now by the way but that is going to be found with the premium and limited trim levels and they will come with the double five spoke design dark gray finish and of course love the side skirts on the wrx definitely looks right at home on this car so overall quite a nice blacked out look to the limited wrx that we have here today but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back here shark fin antenna can be found up top of course low profile spoiler can be found on all trim levels i remember back when this generation wrx came out the base trim level did not have it although all of the trim levels do have that now so in case you were curious about that but let's just skip right now to the fun part integrative rear diffuser down below there dual exhaust outlets with quad stainless steel tips so you guys know what we have to do next not going to go too crazy here but as always here is that exhaust clip And 
so but now since we are around back first thing i wanted to mention is to open up the rear trunk there actually is a button on the key fob feel free to simply just use that the other option is there is a button just by the driver's left knee that is yet another way you can open up that rear trunk there but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at an even 12 cubic feet if that was not enough space for you there is a 60 40 split so that provides a ton of additional space there if you needed it making our way then to the rear legroom that comes in at 35.4 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there did want to also mention for those rear passengers there is a rear center armrest with cup holders that will come standard on all trim levels no rear ventilation unfortunately but i did find that those rear seats were pretty darn comfortable so if you were to go on a long road trip rear passengers in the wrx certainly shouldn't have any issues there then make your way to the front seat six-way manually adjustable driver's seat will come with the base and premium trim levels however you will get a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with the limited and you will find cloth seating with the base and premium leather seat seating with the limited that's of course what you're looking at right now and those front seats will be heated if you were to go with the premium and limited trim levels and by the way those heated seat buttons are located just behind the cup holders there they are kind of tucked away so i did want to mention that but overall seats are bolstered definitely quite well certainly no issues with holding me in place as i was going around the turns there but so now let's go ahead and check out the steering wheel on the wrx it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels with a flat bottom as well in case you were curious then when it comes to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have all of your buttons on one side of the key lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch and by the way the lock button is the subaru logo in the middle of the key there but to go ahead and start this one for the limited trim level at least you do have keyless access with a push button start and then therefore to go ahead and start this one all you need to do is simply put your foot on the brake and clutch and press that engine start button which is located just by the driver's right knee Base and premium trim levels, however, will still get that traditional key start. So it's whatever you like, but either way, once started up, gauges will do a full sweep. There is the tachometer on the left, speedometers on your right, small digital display front and center, giving you things like your SI drive buttons, if you were to go with that CVT trim level at least. And if you don't, the six speed is basically gonna tell you what gear you're in up there. Also your miles per gallon at any given time and the additional gauge display that I found myself looking at every now and then is the one located up top of the infotainment screen showing you things like your boost pressure outside temperature time of the day and it was kind of fun looking at that boost pressure i enjoyed that but nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality first thing i noticed when i got in this one the power moonroof is going to come standard on the limited that we have today it is optional on the premium you cannot get it on the base just in case you wanted that power moonroof in addition to that you do have aluminum alloy foot pedal cover so did love that no aluminum sill plates on the wrx however that you do get on the sti so one of the little differences between those two absolutely love the carbon fiber trim details you can find that just above the passenger side glove box and it ties together just below the driver's side air vent as well so definitely love that accent red stitching throughout the wrx that's always something that's included just in front of the shifter you have a small cubby area that has a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around as much 12 volt power outlet there as well just behind the shifter a very small cubby area that can be found just in front of the two cup holders but perhaps my favorite part now about the wrx that i just noticed this year reviewing these cars is of course you have a center cubby area center armrest that has dual usb charging ports auxiliary port and 12 volt power outlet and of course a little bit of a cubby area but the best part about this center armrest is the top button there you can extend that up so if you're going on a long road trip perhaps with the six speed it is quite convenient to have your elbow resting on that armrest while you're shifting through the gears as opposed to if you have it down it's not quite as comfortable at least if you're going on a longer road trip if you're not who really cares but still i love that it's there at least for the six speed manual so well done subaru thinking of that now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one 6.5 inch colored touchscreen display is going to come with the base seven inch colored touchscreen display is going to come with the premium and limited trim levels either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming as well as android auto and apple carplay even on the base that's definitely something worth mentioning factory navigation system is going to be available for the limited but technically you don't really need it if you got android auto and apple carplay unless you live in the mountains maybe but either way you can of course also check 
out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you guys know I always have to test this out. Six speakers are gonna come with every single trim level. However, there is an optional nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system that is available for the limited. If you went that route, that does add $2,100 to the price, but that is also gonna give you that factory navigation system I was mentioning, along with blind spot monitor and rear cross traffic alert. So it is a package deal. But either way, we do have the six speaker sound system here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Wow, Rage Against the Machine. That was when I was like in a, I don't know, eighth grade, like a while ago. Rage Against the Machine, that was way back in the day. Sound system, honestly, it's not bad for a six speaker sound system. I will say that. I've heard much worse six speaker sound system. So actually decent amount of bass there. It's one of those deals where you're gonna enjoy hearing the turbo spool up a little more than you would care about the sound system. So at least that's my opinion, but it is all right for the WRX. But anywho, last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display is when you do put this WRX in reverse, and by the way, to put the manual in reverse, what you're going to want to do is simply lift up underneath the shifter, slide it into the back right hand corner. Subaru did that to make it more of an intentional act. So therefore you're not shifting in reverse instead of six gear on the highway. So that is definitely pretty nice that Subaru did that. So simply lift up underneath, slide it into the back right hand corner and Every single trim level then is going to give you a rear view camera, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Along with that rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system will come standard. And with any WRX paired up with the CVT transmission, you will also find Subaru EyeSight, giving you things like adaptive cruise control, pre-collision braking, and lane departure and sway warning. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.